people. So welcome back to another KJSP video. I have a very special guest, Matthew. So <laughs> he's a fellow Singaporean. Um, we are from the same batch, KJSP 2019, majoring in International Cooperation in yeah. GSIS. Yeah. So we are from GSIS, and we were from the same uni in Singapore, which is NTU Nanyang Technological University. Today I will be interviewing him about his GKS experience and what he did that secured him the scholarship <laughs> so i'm pretty sure you guys will be interested so let's begin first off so his major is international cooperation what semester are you in now my first year second semester mm -hmm. did you go through the language program yeah yes <laughs> yes i did because um i didn't have any topic score mm -hmm. so i have to undergo a mandatory one year language program so i did my language program in Kongyang university mm -hmm in Nongsan city, South Chung Chung province. Okay, I've never been there, but okay. It took one year, right? Mm. I know in language school, there is like a six month program and then a one year. Mm. So after your six months, did you take a topic? So the GKS scholarship works this way. During your language program, there will be two opportunities for you to take the topic exam, mm -hmm. which is funded by NIAD. So the first one will be at the end of the six months. And then the second one will be before your, the end of your mm -hmm. language program. Mm -hmm. So if you do manage to get topic 5 or 6 in your first try, meaning to say you can move on to graduate school. So that, is, that marks the end of your 6 months in the language program. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, my career is pretty bad. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to stay one year. <laughs> okay. okay, so did you take that first exam? I, I, did, I did. So what was the score? I got 109, which is 11 points away from topic 3. Mm. So that's why you went on with six more months. Unfortunately. Okay, so you went for six months, and then what do you get after that one full year of language? I got a topic for oh. 170 Whoa, points. really? I thought yeah. you got a topic yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like for your reference, like Matt has like zero knowledge. Go so. Like <laughs> zero. So like for him to get topic level four in one year is very incredible. Because people have been asking, is it possible to mm. get topic like four, five, six within just one year if you have no mm. Korean experience? I mean, he's a perfect example. Did you study really hard? Uh, yeah, actually. It was a very stressful period, but uh, it's definitely doable. So don't give up and just continue studying. So you study every single day? To... More or less. Oh. In fact, I did a, you know, question 53? 300 words essay. Ah, yeah, yeah. I did 16 in one shot and I gave it to my teacher. And, uh, wow. Ever since then, the teacher looked at me differently. <laughs> <He's> like, mad. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, so how was your experience in the language school in Nonsan? tell them about it because I have never been to the language school. Okay, the first of all, right, the mm -hmm. teachers, they don't really speak English well. Mm. Or even if they do, they choose not to speak English. Mm -hmm. So you'll be really confused, especially if you don't know Korean, you'll be like, oh, what is this teacher talking mm -hmm. about? Some of my friends actually took out their phone and translated it on the spot. The language program, it's okay. The teacher will give you the fundamentals and the basics, but you really have to work hard on your own and you really have to put in considerable effort to get the topic. If you get below 80%, yes, unfortunately. Have you had friends who got something? Yeah, actually. Okay, I, I thought that it wasn't true, but from mm -hmm. his experience, yes. So people do get sent back if you don't get 80% of the topic. Besides the studying experience, how mm -hmm. was life in Nongsan in general? For those that don't know Nongsan, Nongsan is quite a famous place for strawberries, <laughs> a lot of plantations, <laughs> and military area. The experience is quite unique because um, Joe and I are from Singapore, mm -hmm. um, which is a city-state, right? Yeah. So when I first reached Nongsan, I was a little bit taken aback. Like, rural area. It's, it's really rural, rural like, Plantations wow. everywhere and, and things like this. So it just gives you a different perspective of Korea. Korea is not just about uh, Seoul, Busan, mm. and other cities, big yeah. cities. Sorry, big cities. <laughs> so <laughs> in fact, uh, I think most majority of Korea is still pretty rural yeah. as well. So true. it's also a good one year break that you can actually oh, focus on something. Mm, true. So have you like faced discrimination while you were there? Uh, well, I had a, a Juma telling me to go back to China because of that uh, Corona. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> For your major, do you need Korean, to be fair? Mm, I think so. Yeah, because it's in international cooperation and in GSIS, it's in English. Mm. So, have you been using a Korean map? I use the uh, 안녕하세요, 감사합니다 in the canteen. Tall to say, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so how would you tell like my viewers like how is surviving in Korea as someone who is not really fluent in Korean? Like day to day life? Well, it's quite uh, embarrassing because I learned Korean for one year already and I still cannot uh, 
speak much. You can still get by with uh, survival Korean, mm -hmm. like the, the three words I said, like, 감사합니다, 안녕하세요, and 도와주세요. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand anything, just like, ah, oh, nee, nee, nee. And if it gets a little bit complicated, just, ah, oh, I guess so, I guess so. And then just uh, monkey see, monkey do, and you kind of uh, get by. But I mean, you managed to mm. get your house contract. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So this is something. So it means that being able to speak like just minimum is fine. But do you think like speaking basic Korean, mm. like not fluent Korean, do you feel that it has like prevented you from really integrating into the Korean society? I think more or less yes, because uh the locals they, they are devoid of the opportunity to interact with us. Mm -hmm. I cannot really speak their language well and I don't think they have the patience to actually decipher what I'm talking about. But time to time, you definitely will meet really kind-hearted mm. Koreans who actually bother to uh, stop by and listen to you. And I mean, if you will ask them to chon chon hee, man hee, choose they, they will probably uh, comply and they will actually slow down and do even speak in simpler terms for you. I wish I had better opportunities to uh, speak with Korean or at least practice the Korean. Because now currently in GSIS, all your friends are international right. students, right? So I'm pretty sure you just use English, right? Mm. Obviously, if you have like not like fluent Korean, you wouldn't be going to like Korean studies, like doing just Korean. That would be suicidal. Yeah, that would be suicidal. That's mm -hmm. crazy. But you know, I do have friends who have good Korean skills while doing like not just Korean studies, but other major that is in Korean. They are like suffering, like they are dying. Mm -hmm. So think twice about your major. And also, uh, if I can add, mm. um, topic is not necessarily academic Korean. Yes, true. So it's totally different from, uh, like, maybe you can get a topic 6 or even topic 500 or something. It doesn't really matter because the academic Korean is different and how they use it is, is different as yeah. well. What did you learn in Nonsan? Like, did they just teach you, like, um, for the topic? Did they prepare you just for topic? On the contrary, right? They choose not to prepare us for the topic. <sighs> they, in fact, they only want us to get the pass. So I think their purpose is just to get students to get the topic level free. And in fact, the, the first six months, we didn't touch the topic at all. So when I first did the topic exam at the end of the first six months, mm -hmm. I only had like two or one month of uh, preparation, oh. which is a joke. You know? like, mm -hmm. I only did the 53, like two days before the exam. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of students are not going to pass. So yeah, you have to bear that in mind. So mm -hmm. I think if you are like really determined to get 5-6, you would have to do a lot more studying on your own, right? Right, and I mean, there's a gap time, gap time yeah. between your acceptance and going to Korea. Use that period of time to actually study Korean. And then once you have the necessary foundation, you can actually listen to the lessons for sure. But at the same time, do yourself studying uh, intended for topic. Because whatever they're teaching you, it's uh, to survive in Korea. It's not for topic itself. Mm. So just focus on the topic. So for the language school, it is mandatory one year. So this one year is covered by NIE. Right. right. So within that one year, you need to get 80%. You need to get topic three. Topic, topic three. Mm. So if you don't get topic three, but you get 80%, you get a six month extension. So You're eligible for six months. So one and a half, but in that six extra month from that one year, you need to pay half of it. Half of the language program. Yeah. So that means you get like 1.5 years in the language school. You still get the stipend from NID though. Oh, you get the monthly You allowance. still get the monthly allowance. It's just that you have to cover the additional extension. Mm.